The second half of chapter 19. Don't do it, don't. The blackest moments we live through can only last a little time. And then comes the future. On the average, someone commits suicide in the United States every 35 minutes. On the average, someone goes insane every 120 seconds. Most of these suicides, and probably many of the tragedies of insanity, could have been prevented if these people had only had the solace and peace that are found in religion and prayer. One of the most distinguished psychiatrists living, Dr. Carl Jung, says on page 264 of his book, Modern Man in Search of a Soul, during the past 30 years, people from all the civilized countries of the earth have consulted me. I have treated many hundreds of patients. Among all my patients in the second half of life, that is uh, to say over 35, there has not been one whose problem in the last resort was not that of finding a religious outlook on life. It is safe to say that every one of them fell ill because he had lost that which the living religions of every age have given to the followers, and none of them has been really healed who did not regain his religious outlook. That statement is so significant, I want to repeat it in bold type. Dr. Carl Jung said, During the past 30 years, people from all the civilized countries of the earth have consulted me. I have treated many hundreds of patients among all my patients in the second half of life. That is to say, over 35. There has not been one whose problem in the last resort was not that of finding a religious outlook on life. It is safe to say that every one of them fell ill because he had lost that which the living religions of every age have given to their followers, and none of them has been really healed who did not regain his religious outlook. William James said approximately the same thing. Faith is one of the forces by which men live, he declared, and the total absence of it means collapse. The late Mahatma Gandhi the greatest Indian leader since Buddha, would have collapsed if he had not been inspired by the sustaining power of prayer. How do I know? Because Gandhi himself said so. Without prayer, he wrote, I should have been a lunatic long ago. Thousands of people could give similar testimony. My own father... Well, as I have already said, my own father would have drowned himself had it not been for my mother's prayers and faith. Probably thousands of the tortured souls who are now screaming in our insane asylums could have been saved if they had only turned to a higher power for help instead of trying to fight life's battles alone. When we are harassed and reach the limits of our own strength, Many of us then turn in desperation to God. There are no atheists in foxholes. But why wait till we are just desperate? Why not renew our strength every day? <clears throat> why wait even until Sunday? For years, I have had the habit of dropping into empty churches on weekday afternoons when I feel that I am too rushed and hurried to spare a few minutes to think about spiritual things. I say to myself, wait a minute, Do Dale Carnegie, wait a minute. Why all the feverish hurry and rush, little man? You need to pause and acquire a little perspective. At such times, I frequently drop into the first church that I find open. Although I am a Protestant, I frequently... On weekday afternoons, drop into St. Patrick's Cathedral on 5th Avenue and remind myself that I'll be dead in another 30 years, but that the great spiritual truths that all churches teach are eternal. I close my eyes and pray. I find that doing this calms my nerves, rests my body, and clarifies my perspective. 
and helps me revalue my values. May I recommend this practice to you? During the past six years that I have been writing this book, I have collected hundreds of examples and concrete cases of how men and women conquered fear and worry by prayer. I have in my filing cabinet folders bulging with case histories. Let's take a typical example, the story of a discouraged and disheartened book salesman, John R. Anthony. Mr. Anthony is now an attorney in Houston, Texas, with offices in the humble building. Here is his story as he told it to me. Twenty-two years ago, I closed my private law office to become state representative of an American law book company. My specialty was selling a set of law books to lawyers, a set of books that were almost indispensable. I was ably and thoroughly trained for the job. I knew all the direct sales talk and the convincing answers to all possible objections. Before calling on a prospect, I familiarized myself with his rating as an attorney, the nature of his practice, his politics and hobbies. During my interview, I used that information with ample skill, yet something was wrong. I just couldn't get orders. I grew discouraged. As the days and weeks passed, I doubled and redoubled my efforts, but was still unable to close enough sales to pay my expenses. A sense 